What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw 4 TV. You know, so far through the first three games of this series, and by no means am I saying the Knicks can't still win this series, but it's becoming more and more apparent that Miami is the better of these two teams, man. As strange as that sounds to say. Because when you go by the regular season, your your brain is telling you, from what we saw, that the Knicks should be the better team. They perform better during the regular season. You would think the combination of the Knicks' defense and Orlando's, uh, excuse me, Miami's struggle offensively throughout the, the uh, regular season, though, I do have to th admit, they did uptick offensively the last mm, maybe month and a half of the of the regular season because at one point they were averaging 108 points a game, but I think they finished like 109 plus, which would indicate that they started having a lot of games scoring more points, which I guess would mean that they were getting a little bit better offensively, you know. Um, but still, that's what I'm coming away with, because this is the first game of the series that clearly, clearly, one team was just better than the other, from almost start to finish, the Miami Heat. First game, Miami overcame a double-digit deficit, the third time I think they've done that this postseason, to win a game. Game two, which was pretty much seen as a must win for the New York Knicks, they got a victory, but they had to hold off a late Miami rally. And they barely did that. This game, on the road, New York didn't bring their jump shots, apparently. And um, that was the difference in the game. Not that Miami was, you know... The Golden State Warriors or anything like that offensively themselves or Sacramento, but their defense was enough for them to gain a victory. And that's one thing that Miami is capable of doing. They're capable when they're playing well to still win games when offensively they're not at their best. And that is generally the mark of a championship level team. But Strangely, Miami this season did not play like this, at least not with the consistency. So this is why this is such a weird playoff run so far, because, as we know, Miami only finished the 10th seed this year. But uh, they won the game 105-86, 105-86. They take a two games and one lead in this best of seven series. Uh, looking at the Miami Heat, the high score was Jimmy Butler. He had 28 points, uh, 9 of 21 shooting from the floor, so it wasn't his best shooting night. Uh, then again, you know, Eric Spolster is a much better coach than Budenholzer, so Butler's not going to be scoring 50, 60 uh, points like he did against the Bucks. Uh, at least not likely. But he was 10 of 11 from the line, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. Uh, Bam Adebayo had a strong game by his standards, 17 points, 12 rebounds in a block, 7 of 14 from the floor. Uh, Max Strauss filling in for the injured Kyle Korver had another strong showing with 19 points, uh, 7 of 14 overall shooting. Uh, did not shoot well from downtown, only 3 of 10, but, you know, he did, you know, pretty, he did, did well overall. Um, Kevin Love in the starting lineup played 23 minutes, four points, uh, only one of five from the floor, but he did have nine rebounds, two offensive rebounds, and four assists in the ball game. Gabe Vincent five points, only one of eight from downtown, and uh, their bench was more productive overall. 
than the New York Knicks bench. I think their bench outscored New York's 32-25, led by Kyle Lowry, who had 14 points coming off the bench, 4 of 9 from the floor, 2 of 4 from downtown, and 4 for 4 from uh, the charity stripe. He also had 4 uh, assists in the game. For the, for the New York Knicks, uh, Julius Randle had another terrible outing. 10 points, 14 rebounds, 4 turnovers, 4 for 15 shooting from the floor, 0 for 5 from 3-point range. Just for the most part in these playoffs, he has not been very good for the New York Knicks. Um, Jalen Brunson, 20 points, but only 0 for 5 from 3-point range. And Josh Hart, 15 points, uh, 12 rebounds, but only... uh, 5 of 12 shooting from the floor. R.J. Barrett, 14 points, but only 5 for 16 from the floor. And um, Miami just was quicker, more energetic. Uh, they were quicker to, to, to lose balls. Uh, in the rebounding department, the Knicks had 48 rebounds. Miami, 37, uh, 50, excuse me. So, the, Miami had a slight rebounding advantage. Um, the Knicks committed 13 turnovers. And uh, Miami also had 13 turnovers. And uh, the Knicks actually shot fewer free throws than the Miami Heat, which is kind of unusual because New York tends to shoot more free throws, but not in this particular game. New York was 16 of 22 from downtown Miami I mean 16 to 22 for the free throw line excuse me Miami 20 to 31 from the free throw line and um, as a team Miami shot 39 percent from the floor only 22 percent from downtown but that trumps the Knicks who were 31 of 91 34 percent shooting from the floor 8 for 40 from downtown. 8 for 40, only 20%. They missed their first nine three-point attempts. So that's partially why they didn't shoot as many free throws is because of the fact that they relied more on outside shooting and misfired 80% of the time. And um, when you're not shooting well and the defense is holding you to fewer possessions as the Heat did the Knicks. That's how you get a roughly 20-point victory as Miami did. So now they hold the two games to one lead. If Miami can secure a victory in game four, that'll put them in a very advantageous uh, situation to win this series. So I'm not saying that the series be over if Miami goes up 3-1, but the odds would be in their favor to win. And um, this is a this is an incredible run, man, that the Miami Heat are going on. I'll tell you one thing. It's making me feel a lot less shitty about them beating the Bucks. I mean, I still think that we should have performed better than that, but it's making me feel a lot less shitty about it now. Like it wasn't some fluke. But anyway, tell me what you guys think. 